Okay, so today we're going to be talking about going from mass of one thing to the mass of another. And that's just normally because in the real world, we measure things on scales. And scales don't measure things in moles, they measure them in grams. So that means when we're given something, we're generally going to be looking at uh, the grams of that particular thing. So we're going to go ahead and look at an example problem. As you can see, I already have a balanced chemical equation, and that's because I know that I'm going to be going between two different compounds that are related to each other. And so let's look at the actual problem. It says, how many grams of sodium fluoride are produced using 23.7 grams of sodium chloride? Now I see that I have my two different compounds, and I see that both of them want masses, okay? Very first thing, every single time that I see that I have multiple compounds, I'm going to go ahead and visually connect those two compounds together on the formula just so that I can make sure I don't mess up when I make my mole-to-mole -mole ratios. And we're going to go ahead and just look at those mole-to-mole -mole ratios. Remember that this formula is uh, like a recipe. It tells us the ratios between everything that's present, okay? So I went ahead and I wrote my two mole-to-mole -mole ratios, both ways that it can be written. For every two moles of sodium chloride, I have two moles of sodium fluoride. Or I can say for every two moles of sodium fluoride, I have two moles of sodium chloride. Okay, so I have my mole-to-mole -mole ratio. And now what I need to do is I need to calculate my molar mass for both compounds. I need it for both compounds because both compounds have masses required somewhere in their um, in the problem. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and write the ratios. This isn't a tutorial for how to calculate molar mass. If you need help with that, please go watch that video. But for right now, we're just going to go ahead and accept that we know how to calculate molar mass. And I'm just going to show you what those multiple uh, versions of the ratio are going to look like here. Remember, this is not a fraction, it is a ratio, and I calculated the molar mass for sodium chloride to be 58.443 grams per mole, and the mass of sodium fluoride to be 41.988 grams per mole, and this is why I've been harping on you for making sure that you actually label what all this is, is because now we're dealing with multiple com uh, compounds and multiple molar masses, so we need to make sure that we know which one to use and when. Now that we have our setups done, what we can do is actually go ahead and translate this initial problem into math and choose the conversions that will allow me to cancel my units. So whenever I initially put my uh, formula from English to math, I know that I'm looking for how many grams, so I said X grams. I'm looking for sodium fluoride, so I say sodium fluoride are produced equals, and then 23.7 grams sodium chloride. Okay, that was my initial setup. From there, I was able to see that I had grams of sodium chloride on top which meant that I needed to choose the molar mass ratio that had gram sodium chloride on the bottom, which left me with moles of sodium chloride on top, which means if I wanted to cancel moles of sodium chloride, I needed to choose the mole to mole ratio that had sodium chloride on the bottom, which then left me with moles of sodium fluoride on top, which meant I needed to choose the mole or mass ratio that left moles of sodium fluoride on the bottom and that finally left me with grams of sodium fluoride which is what I said that I wanted. Now that I've made sure that all of my uh, individual pieces line up I can go ahead and plug that into the calculator and solve. Now whenever I plug it into the calculator remember that we take 23.7 We multiply it by everything that's on top, so that's going to be 1, 2, and 41.988. And I'm going to divide by everything that's on the bottom, which is 58.443, 2, and 1. That gives me this number. I want just two 
decimal places. So I went ahead and I underlined that second number after the decimal showed that I was looking over to see if I needed to round up. Seven does in fact make me round up. And then I went ahead and I attached the appropriate unit for um, my number, which is going to be the unit that I stated that I wanted in the very beginning. Now we just get to celebrate because we're all done.